Hey there and welcome to Trivia Ronin, I'm your host Douglas Solomon, whether you're joining us live on Zoom or Twitch or after the fact on YouTube, welcome or happy to have you quick breakdown of the rules, one we're on our code here, you keep your own score, feel free to cheat, you get nothing to your, uh... Two. You have 45 seconds to answer. Absolutely do not show your answer until the time is up. And three, if you're watching on Twitch, due to the delay, drop your answer in the chat around 10, five seconds, whatever, like that left. That'll line up with us live. Tonight, there are 30 questions, one point each, and a story question at the end worth 10 points for a total of 40 points. Last night, we did two rounds of Wayla and one question. We're back to two rounds of questions and one Wayla tonight. Oh, you want me to? Yeah, T-Girl, I got you. Hey there, welcome to Trivia Running. I'm your host, Douglas Solomon. Whether you're joining us live on Zoom or Twitch or after the fact on YouTube, welcome. We're happy to have you. Quick breakdown of the rules. One, we're on our code here. Quick breakdown of the rules. One, quick breakdown of the... Um, oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Question one. What director who shares a name with a famous explorer directed the film Mrs. Doubtfire? 45 seconds. Director who shares a name with a famous explorer directed the film Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire was a movie starring Robert Williamson where he plays a uh, German chef, personal chef. But it's a, a lady personal chef. So, really good. Really good stuff. Yeah, I, <laughs> they were going to have a day for this guy, but they changed it at the last second. Let's see him, guys. Ron Howard, Christopher Columbus. Oh, God. George, I'm giving you one more. Magellan, it's Chris Columbus. Director Chris Columbus, Sir Francis Drake. Director Sir Francis Drake. Question two. The car crash that killed Princess Diana occurred in which city? 45 seconds. But yeah. Director Amerigo Vespucci. Director uh, Balboa. Director... It's just fun at a certain point. Ponce de Leon. Christ, QVC. You're going to give me a complex if I had any sort of emotional connection to myself. The car crash that killed Princess Diana occurred in which city? Four, three, two, one. What do we got? Maha, London, Maha, London, Maha, 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 London, London. London, Paris is the answer. It was in Paris, the one in France, not Ohio. It was not Paris, Ohio. Is there a Paris, Georgia? Probably. There's like a Paris everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good one, T-Girl. That's awful. I hate Jimmy, Car uh, Jimmy Carr. I love him. I, that's a joke. Which famous spy novelist wrote the children's story Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Famous spy novelist wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh... What famous spy novelist wrote the children's story Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? Who wants to uh, read the next one for a half? Christopher, gotcha. Hey, you should be careful. If you breathe in that smoke, it can alter your mind. You're welcome. Take, take that into consideration. Let's see it, guys. Tom Clancy. Bev Was that Beverly Cleary? Ian Fleming of Bond fame. We were looking for Ian Fleming. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of spy shit. Anyway, go ahead, uh, Christopher. Uh, 
Aloysius, thank you very much, Christopher. Aloysius O'Hare is the uh, Aloy, Aloy Isaias. O'Hare is the antagonist in what 2021 animated movie? Whoa, 2012, not 2021, 2012. That's supposed to say 2012. Sorry, Aloysius O'Hare is the antagonist in what 2012, that's a typo, animated movie. Twenty twelve. If I, I swear to God, if I see somebody with a twenty twenty one animated movie, you're dead to me. Two one zero. What do we got? <laughs> the Lego Movie. What else we got? I can't see. It's oh God. Uh, the, uh, the last. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, The Last Dragon, the 2021 movie. I get it now. I get I get jokes. It's just too difficult to read your page for me to, like, get the comedic timing of showing me. Um, not Frozen, that was 2013. Uh, the answer is the Lorax. The Lorax, Aloysius O'Hare. Correct, Drama Turtle. Question five. What kind of nut can be used to produce dynamite. What nut can be used to produce dynamite? 40 seconds. There are like, I would say there are probably four nuts that, like, if it was super awkward, I wouldn't have asked the question. So it's going to be one of, like, the four most popular nuts, or I wouldn't have asked. Like, if you write Brazil nut, it's just don't. It's going to be a more popular nut than that. 210. Yes, Derb, I can count these nuts. Um... Walnut, D's, D's. Okay, so three different people thought D's was hilarious. Um, the answer is the peanut, but also D's is a funny joke. It's just the most, you just really missed an opportunity to do the most common nut. Also saying nut at a certain point feels dirty. Question six, the earth is closest to the sun during which month? 45 seconds. The earth is closest, dur uh, closest to the sun during which month? Why, Drama Turtle? Yeah, we had great guesses. Chestnuts, peanuts, almonds, chestnuts. If it was cashews, almonds, chestnuts, or peanuts, I would have... Oh, wait. Are peanuts not nuts? Are they legumes? I might have, I might have fucked up that question. All right, show me your answers. July, December, June. The answer is January. December was the closest guess. It was going to be December or January. That's why the Southern Hemisphere has such hot summers compared to ours. January, team. Everybody with the December guess. QVC, you're on it. Oh... Uh, my mom just wrote no. Debbie2107, that's my mom. She wrote no. Uh, what is the name of the island that Jurassic Park is built on? 45 seconds. I've asked this before. What is the name of the island that Jurassic Park is built on? Answer me. Half point for the next one. Anyone want to read for me? All right, Steven. QVC, I get it. Frankly, I need all the help I can get, but I understand. 
Does anybody not know this? Or does anybody know this? Thumbs up if you know the answer to this. Okay. Let's see it. Hey, Harry. You wrote Bublar, which is funny. Isla Nublar is correct. We were looking for Isla Nublar. Not to be confused with the other island, Isla something. Um, even though nut is in its name, a peanut is actually a legume. Thank you, mother. So I wrote the wrong question. Give yourself a point for the nut question. That's a screw up on my end. And, uh, Steven, go ahead, bud. Uh, that's L-O-T-R. Yep. In Lord of the Rings, Gloin is whose father. Thank you very much. 45 seconds. Ooh, a fight's about to start in chat. Fight, fight, fight. In LOTR, Gloin is whose father? Wait. Yeah, is whose father. Okay, sorry. I... What is Gloin's son or da daughter's name? Let me see. Uh, crustacean, correct. Um, Samwise Gamgee, no. Gimli, yes. We were looking for the dwarf Gimli. Thank you, JRR. And question nine, what does the R in the movie rating stand for? What does the R stand for? I, honest to God, did not know this. It was weird to me when I saw it and I went, I can't believe I've never asked myself this. I worked in a movie theater. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports, it's in the game. What do we got? Renaissance. Uh, restricted, 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 restricted. Well, I think some of you guys knew it. Uh, it was restricted. Uh, George or Alex, you want to read this for a half? Go ahead. Good work. In what movie franchise are the Yautya, Yaut, 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 the, that word, the antagonist? 45 seconds. Great read. Great read. That's just some, just plowing through that with like big dick energy. Just like got this start tallying your scores guys yeah reverential i was hoping somebody would give me a, a better answer than restricted but a lot of good players a lot of a lot of playing players on twitch right now <laughs> Two, one, zero. What do we got? Toy Story, Star Trek. You were so close. Predator. Question one of round two. Who provided the majority of the songs and lyrics for Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron? Voiced by Matt Damon. Who provided most of the songs and lyrics for Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. The the song the big song from that was Here I am. This is me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. But I won't sing it like the person because that would give it up. That would 
that would give it away. All right, fuck it. I will do it. Here I am. This is me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. That was perfect. So if you don't get it, you just don't know him. Four, three, two, one. Bob Dylan, Sarah McLaughlin, Celine Dion, Rod Stewart. It's a great guess. Rod's Bruce Springsteen. It was Brian Adams. Brian Adams. Oh, Predator. It was that Predator, Brian Adams. Um, and now you know it. So you know that that's such a good, I did such a good was the summer of 69. Question two, what do we call the bottom number of a fraction? 45 seconds. What do we call the bottom number of a fraction? Um, I don't know why you put a question mark, Derb. That was clearly an exclamation point you meant to hit. We call the bottom number of a fraction. One on the bottom. That bottom number. Yeah, I got you a STEM question, Derb, so shut up about it. Let's see. You were looking, oh, not the dividend, the denominator. It was on the tip of your tongue. The denominator. Question three. What city in Turkey is located in both Europe and Asia? If you name two cities in Turkey, I'll be shocked. So it's the one you're thinking of if you know it. What city in Turkey is located in both Europe and Asia? I love my next question. Hey Chris, do you want a point and a half uh, to read the next question just so you can beat uh, Alex and George? Okay, great. I said, uh, because you aren't willing to play the game and you're still ahead of Chris, I'm giving Chris a point and a half to read the next question. Let's see it. Uh, Istanbul, Istanbul, Istanbul. Tryptophan. I mean, Istanbul. Wait a second. Is that a QVC? Did you just quote? Oh, no, you're just doing Turkey. Sorry. There was a, that was a joke in, um, what was the name of that? All right, it's going to pop into my head. There was a comedian that, had a show that was really good. What was his name? Ah! Anyway. All right. Uh, yes, it is Istanbul. Question four, Christopher. True or false? The movie Tron received an Oscar nomination for the best visual effects. 45 seconds. Thank you so much. I didn't want to read it, so I'm glad you did. 50-50, guys. True or false? The movie Tron received an Oscar nomination for Best Visual Effects. What is his name? Oh, it's something like... It's not Titan. It's ti Titus. Christopher Titus had a show called Titus. And they made a joke about tryptophan that was very funny. And I'm not going to do it now because I thought you were quoting that. But it was just because I wrote Turkey. All right, what do we got? We've got true. We've got true. Christopher, you knew this was coming. <sighs> I, I can't give him the point. It's false. You 
would have thought true for sure. But Chris, no answer? Okay, he's going through shit. That's fine. Let's move on. Question five, the novel Jane Eyre was written by what author? 45 seconds, Jane Eyre was written by whom? <laughs> well, yes, but uh, that's not a, a horse, that's an octopus. That's my Sasha Grishik. But uh, I think it's probably best you give the full name, yeah. Let's see him, Virginia Wolf. Uh, Jane Eyre wrote. The Life and Times of Jane Eyre. Charlotte Bronte. We were looking for Charlotte Bronte. Uh, Carlotta. Carlotta's Way. Bronte. Question six. What's the Microsoft email service called? I love this question. Because, you know, you're like, oh, yeah. If you think of it, what is the Microsoft? People think I'm soft. Yeah, Microsoft email service called. Right, no, Drama Turtle, I understand. There are so many Brontes. Just so many Brontes. Zero. Now's the answering time. Outlook, 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 Outlook. I feel really bad because I wrote Hotmail, but Outlook's totally right. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, 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 no. I wasn't saying Hotmail's not right. Outlook is totally also right if you wrote Outlook. Thank you, Drama. Question seven for two points. What animal-centric Disney film was released in 1970? For two points. 1970. What animal-centric Disney film was released at night? There were a lot of them during that time period. Guess the right one. It's for two points. What animal-centric Disney film was released in 1970? Harry, maybe a little early on that one. Hey, hi Tara. Everybody say everybody say hi to Tara now. I'm not on Zoom. She can't see. Two one zero. What do we got? Bambi, Robin Hood, Jungle Book. Uh, Fox and Hound. It is Aristocrats, and I won't ask you how you know that drama turtle, but it is the Aristocats. Aristocats. I wrote Kratz. It must have spell checked. The Aristocats. I, I want to apologize. Aristocrats is definitely wrong. That's a completely different story. Question, uh, question eight. Boxing Day is the day after what holiday? 45 seconds. Boxing Day is the day after what holiday?
Oh, that's funny. George and Alex, uh, yeah, Tara's in the... If everybody's wondering if that Tara Erickson's the same Tara Erickson from the Lil Caesars. Is it Little or Lil? I don't even know. Caesars commercial. It is. Let's see. Guys, it was Christmas. It was Christmas. Everybody got it, right? Christmas, Christmas. Everybody wrote that. Question nine. The title of Adolf Hitler's autobiography. Autobiography? That's not a good word for that. Mein Kampf is what when translated to English. What does Mein Kampf mean in English? The title of Adolf Hitler's autobiography, Mein Kampf, is what when translated to English? seconds four three two one Ooh, yes 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 we got a few people buy my painting <laughs> i'll give you that one my manifesto no make america great again <laughs> jesus all right you know what you all get at least a half a point for all of those <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, that's all just terrific uh it's oh fuck uh my shit camp my camp my struggle it was my struggle. My struggle, my battle, my struggle. Question 10, which legendary musical artist had a prominent role in the 2017 film Kingsman, The Golden Circle? 45 seconds, which legendary musical artist had a prominent role in the 2017 film Kingsman, The Golden Circle? Also, start uh, tallying your shit. Tally, tally. Tally, tally. come out like this week that hitler liked to be peed on or something like that like just like trump all right let's see now everyone show me your shit yeah yeah that's a person who's seen the movie uh-huh not keith richards elton john is correct neil diamond adele it's elton john disney princesses things you can stick up your ass that are nutritious and black history Welcome to Trivia Ronin. 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 I'm your host, Douglas Larlam, and I'm not wearing pants. As of August 2019, what is the top grossing film to hold an MPAA rating of G? It's gonna be a nice, quiet, intimate show. She murders deaf children right after they get cochlear implants. Don't ever forget, I can kill people I think about. We make up for it by being less creepy than Drew Carey. Shit's going down on Twitch. It's like four dementia movies. I wanted to watch them, but I forgot. <laughs> Remember movies in theaters when they made money? That was a thing. I'll make love to you. Am I supposed to wait? Saturday night and you're on Twitch during a pandemic. If you're not drinking, you're doing it wrong. It's a cat toy on a reusable straw. Fuck with that algorithm. This is Doug's tie, by the way. You almost don't need a gunshot to die. Doug, you think we'll get a lawsuit out of this one? I don't care. Don't fuck this up, McNelly. If you guys were just fucking dumb, I'd be better at this as a host. It was Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4. That came out in 2019. When was that? And now we go on to Wayla. Wayla is what are you looking at? Uh, it's the visual portion of the night. And basically I'm going to show you images and you have to say what you're looking at. Or a question about what you're looking at is, will be asked and yada, yada, yada. Let's get right into Wayla. Question one. Start easy. Who's that? 45 seconds. What are you looking at?
Sorry, I'm trying to read everybody's stuff now on Twitch. I look away for three minutes. I still haven't gotten my voice back for singing for your uh, acceptance. I sang I'm Every Woman, which would be a disco song. Alex could have sang for a point, but didn't. What do we got? This is Tina Turner. Not Whitney Houston. That is Tina Turner. Yeah, I always thought it was uh, I'm a tiny dancer, not private dancer, because of tiny dancer. So I always forget that. She taught Mick Jagger how to dance. We should talk more about Tina Turner throughout all of these. Uh, but next is what kind of, what breed of cat is this? Is Tina Turner's real name Anime Bullock? If I don't know that, and that turns out to be true, I love that answer. Nice. It feels like the kind of thing that when someone says Anime Bullock for no reason, it must be correct. So just so you guys know, if I ever ask you a question uh, where the answer is Tina Turner, you can also write Anime Bullock, and I'll give you a bonus point. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> Ruination with conjoined. Um, not a zebra cat, not Himalayan. It's just a good old fashioned Siamese. It's a good old fashioned, good old, good old fashioned Siamese cat. Kitty. Um, what is Humphrey Bogart holding? There's a picture of it on the left. Humphrey Bogart is holding what? What is Humphrey Bogart holding? I'll get out of your way. <laughs> yeah. Hold, hold your uh, stack of books together. That's all it's good for. Three, two, one. Where's everybody on Twitch? Old fashioned BAFTA. Uh, a failed art project, a fucking crow. That is the Maltese Falcon. The Maltese Falcon of Maltese Falcon fame. It's not an eagle statue. It is a, 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 a Maltese Falcon. Um, who voiced this character? Not at all in the news this week. Who voiced this character? I think all of uh, LA rejoiced this week. I suppose there were people who were making money, but. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, you wrote uh, QVC, you wrote Ellen did not so generous. I think the D is actually to negate it. It's Ellen not generous in uh, the, the translation. Uh, Ellen the selfish. Yeah, it's all of those. Ellen the generous is correct. That uh, what is that top? What is that top thing? A uh, it's a it's a it's a thing. What is that? That symbol stand for it's actually not a thing it's a thing but it's like not you know i don't even know how to answer this 
Derb, I'll assume you're gonna get this one. Because you're all fucking, like, annoying about shit like this. Ten seconds. Two, one, what do we got? Uh, <laughs> douche coin, full point. Doge coin, also full point. What is this character, Joe Panaliano's character in The Matrix? What is this character's name? We all saw The Matrix, right? Thumbs up for the Zoom call. Everyone saw The Matrix. Okay. You've all seen it. eats steak and then he says ignorance is bliss are you telling me that this guy looks like i don't even know who it is andy reed this is my dad let's see it oh derb no, 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 no. It's Cypher, not Cyrus. Cypher is the answer. Drama Turtle, Paul, does look like a Paul also, but no, it turns out it's Cypher. Wrote Cyrus after he said, I also know this one. Tells us Matrix 4 is coming out, and he says the wrong answer. Uh, this, These are characters from what Netflix show that uh, season 4 dropped yesterday or two days ago. New Netflix show. <laughs> Harry, I'm sorry. Or I'm happy. I guess I'm happy. It's very good. It's a very good show. It's very funny and witty it's american made it's not an adaptation four three two one dragon ball z nope it is castlevania that's dracula in the back castlevania we were looking for you should watch it if you aren't it's good Fight scenes that are like, oh, they totally broke those bones right in my ear. Um, what do I want? Do I want to ask movie or actor? I'll say what movie is this? We learned last night this was not the first movie to sync audio with video. But people think this movie is the first movie to sync audio with video. I told you the answer last night during the story. Al Jolson. If you want to know who's singing, I could have picked the famous picture of him in blackface. Instead, I chose this one. Three, two, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's getting it. Who's guessing? It's the jazz singer. Anybody? No? The jazz singer. That was the... Just always know whenever anybody says that what was the first movie to sync up audio with uh, video, it's the jazz singer. Except that's not true. They were doing it for decades before that, but this still gets credit for it. What's her character's name? What is her character's name?
What is her character's name? Uh, okay, played by Tina Fey. There's your hint. Let's see it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon. Liz Lemon from Thirty Rock. Tina Fey's character's named Liz Lemon. And who is this a picture of? Who are you looking at? Uh, QVC, probably the last one, but not this picture, the last picture. Who is this a picture of? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see it. We got Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama, anybody else? We got Angela Davis, Michael. It is a young Tina Turner. That there is Tina Turner again. And I'm ha I'm very proud of the like several people on Twitch went for it. Uh, it is a young Tina Turner. Well done. That should be the last one. Uh, guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about Russia. Um, in 1913, a 26-year-old guy by the name of Nikolai Vavilov uh, went to study in England under a guy named William Bateson. William Bateson was the second to Mendel, uh, who, who created basically genetics. Bateson was now the face and voice of geneticists and genetics, but... Uh, Vavilov didn't want to study human genetics. He wanted to study plant genetics because there was a food shortage in Russia at the time. And he wanted to find plants that were uh, uh, able to resist disease. So that's where we are right now. It's 1913. He's in England. But in 1916, World War I is breaking out and he gets forced to go back to Russia. So now here he is, this guy who studied with the absolute best geneticist. And at this time, um, being smart was valued. Later, we'll talk about, it wasn't so much. But in Russia, it was very valued. And this guy was now an expert in botany. And he said, uh, they offered him all these jobs to head uh, agriculture programs and, and institutes of botany and agriculture. He said, absolutely tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to travel around the world. Russia, you should pay for this. And they said, cool. And I'm going to collect seeds. And he traveled. Boy, did he travel. Boy, did he collect seeds by hand. This guy over the next 25 years ended his marriage because he was never home. He tra uh, traveled to over 60 countries, um, over five continents, uh, on five continents, he uh, uh, learned dozens of languages just so he could speak to farmers about their crops. For no other, he learned dozens of languages in his 30s to be able to do that uh, is, is incredible to me. He was a people thought he was a spy because he was carrying textbooks from other languages like Germany. Um, at one point, he was traveling in a train and... Uh, he fell between the two cars and he held on until someone showed up just with like his arms with his feet dragging and holding on to the the the, the link between the the, the cars. Uh, he got malaria and typhus and didn't stop. The guy was a badass. By the time he came back to Russia, he was a national hero. He had sent back, handpicked by himself, hundreds of thousands of seeds from different species around the world of plants so he could figure out how to, uh, using genetics, cross them and make the strongest plants possible. He was a superstar. 
And he went and he made this speech at one point where he said, based on the parents of the plant, I can tell you what stock length is it's going to be. I can tell you what flower color it's going to be. I can tell you stuff that people just didn't know back then. They anecdotally knew it, but they couldn't prove it scientifically. He could prove it scientifically. Um, and uh, when they're going to pollinate and, and everything like that. So it's um, really interesting knowledge that farmers would need to know, but they didn't know back then. I said he was a smart guy and it was valued. The reason it became not valued in the mid thirties, communism takes over and they want to elevate the every man. They don't want to elevate the, the rich people, the people of like of wealth and of means and the people who studied their way to the top. So they get, they start elevating people who maybe aren't so deserving because they want to show an every man being able to be elevated. One guy they bring up uh, really quickly in the ranks was a guy who used to be friends with Vavilov, a guy by the name of Lysenko. Vavilov was uh, the guy who was kind of overlooking the career of Lysenko, but Lysenko hated Vavilov because Vavilov at one point said, your theories are shit. You're not using science. You're trying to create panaceas to fix everything. You're, you're, you're doctoring your numbers. Your data's all wrong. Nobody should be paying attention to you. So how did this guy get past Vavilov? Well, he had a pea crop last through the winter. And that was a big deal at this time in Russia. They sent a, a person who, uh, turns out it was a fluke. They sent a reporter to report on this crop and this guy. And the reporter realized how boring this story was. So he wrote into the story, uh, scientists came from all over just to shake this guy's hand. And that wasn't true at all, but it made this guy into somewhat of a celebrity. One of the things he said you could do was freeze seeds and they would give you a better yield. The crop would yield better in the winter if you freeze seeds. Totally not true, never been true, and science and farmers around the world knew this forever. That was not true. But he said it, Stalin heard it, and said, I'm going to make this guy the head of our science. Why? Because genetics is not an everyman concept. It's a top-down concept, whereas freezing the seeds is a bottom-up concept. Basically, he thought it was a great metaphor for what the Russian people were going through, saying, if you are, if you're beaten, beaten up, beaten down, if you get stronger from it. And he thought that the freezing a seed to make a better yield was a great metaphor for that, for that. So this guy rises through the ranks immediately. Now he's right up at the very top with one of the most, the smartest, most influential people of all time. And this guy who hates him, they would have all of these debates and it would get really, really severe, really, really harsh. Uh, right at this time, World War II breaks out also. And that's important in a second. It's not important right now. But uh, Lysenko and Vavil... Va Vavil oh, shit. Sorry. Vavilov. This is the syllables we're getting me. Vavilov. Um, they would debate, sometimes in the street, heated. And one point, Vavilov said to Lysenko, you're the reason our country has been surpassed by other countries, which is a fine thing to say to someone who's not best friends to Joseph Stalin. But when you're best friends with Joseph Stalin, he goes, hey, Joe, can we put this guy in prison? Joe goes, yeah, sure, whatever, I don't care. So he puts him in prison. They arrest him. They interrogate him for uh, 400 times for over 1,700 hours. He, he agrees to everything. He says, yep, I did it. Whatever they put in front of him, he's now admitted to these terrible crimes and they give him the death penalty. All because he argued with Lysenko. Now, they did commute it to be 20 years in prison. And we know World War II doesn't last 20 years. So we'll get to that here in a second. But right at this time, this was June. In September, the Nazis storm and siege Leningrad. The uh, uh, Something we haven't talked about is the organization, the main organization that held on to these seeds... It's called the VIR. So if I talk about the VIR, it's the organization holding on to the seeds this guy sent back. 
during this siege, it was called like the 900 day siege. So it took several years that the Nazis were trying to take over Leningrad. And at the very center of this, with all of the turmoil that was going on from all parties, there was this world seed bank in the middle of Leningrad. The Nazis wanted it because they were trying to get more room for Germans and they wanted to be able to plant more crops. The uh, Once they defended off the, the Nazis, they defended off the, the Nazis, all of a sudden the locals were like, hey, you got all these seeds? And they go, yeah, but we're not gonna let anybody touch them because our guy, this legend, this, this absolute juggernaut of our field is rotting in prison for, for uh, all the work he put in his life's work are these seeds. You can't have them. So eventually they fend off, but these were people who were eating 250 grams a day total. They were eating uh, wallpaper paste uh, glue to survive. Like they were in dire straits. It was negative 35 Celsius. Dire, like this was bad. And they uh, uh, end up um, uh, backing off. So now these scientists, 16 scientists, three scientists at a time rotating for two years, making sure it's always under lock and key. No one can get to it. Now they're dealing with rats. You can't convince rats of anything. Rats can smell the seeds. They want to eat them. They figure out how to hang hundreds of thousands of seeds cataloged from the ceiling so rats can't get to them. Lastly, after all of that, they can't eat it themselves there are nuts there was rice there's all of this stuff and the scientists don't touch it five of the 16 scientists over two years who were sworn to protect these among themselves never took a handful for themselves and five of them died starved to death during the siege of leningrad they died of starvation within arm's reach of food that could have kept them alive. All because they believed in their leader who's now in prison, what he believed. In January of 1943, uh, Vavilov complains of chest tightness, shortness of breath, diarrhea. He goes to the hospital, having never heard the story about his seeds, always assuming they were destroyed. Um, he dies two days later starved to death slowly and methodically by the government so he never makes it out he never knows that's a really really sad story about a person who was really trying to fight for something but from a legacy standpoint later the Russians would say we fucked up with him we shouldn't have done that we want to protect these seeds and he always wanted to create a world seed bank after russia there was in europe they did it in australia they did it in central and south america and north america they did it in africa they did it there are these world seed banks just in case crops disappear they're saving seeds to be able to replant to feed humanity or if there's an extinction event they're saving these seeds and then in 2008 svalbard norway sweden i don't know uh, opens up the doomsday vault for seeds. There's a there's a large sticking out of the side of a mountain. If you've never seen it, it's pretty incredible. It's uh it's temperature regulated, and it's just sticking out of the side of a mountain where they're keeping 4.5 million seeds. Should there be nuclear winter? Should a comet hit uh, the Earth? Should all of humans be destroyed? And like there's a handful left who have to regrow everything. We have access to all of the crops on uh, on Earth today, and they're constantly updating it. The very first seeds that were put in there, there was no doubt where they were gonna go. They went to the VIR and they said, hey, we're doing this thing. It's inspired by your boy Vavilov. Do you have any seeds left? And they said, not only do we have seeds left, we have every seed left and those seeds descendants. So they sent 60 boxes of seeds to Svalbard, untouched, that were all handpicked by this guy who walked around 60 countries talking to farmers about their crops, taking seeds. And right now, I just think it's really cool that there's this vault 
of seeds in Norway or Sweden or whichever one it is. And 60 boxes, the oldest boxes in there is this guy's legacy. And should any shit happen between, you know, even Russia and America or whatever it is, like, should we get this crazy nuclear win of this history? This guy's seeds from a hundred years ago might end up saving the day. And that's the story of how Lysenko's an asshole and Vavilov was the head of the, the best thing about plants. Anyway, my question to you is this. With 45 seconds on the clock, I told you that this was in Leningrad. Before it was Leningrad, before Lenin was in power, it was Petrograd. Petrograd was during someone else's reign, the last emperor. Who was the last emperor, and I only need a last name, of Russia? 45 seconds on the clock. And the answer is, of course, Tina Turner. seconds his name was saint nicholas the passion bearer i wrote it down what was his last name what do we got petrovsky shah and romanov romanov anastasia's alive romanov is correct we were looking for Nikolai the second Romanov. Uh, sorry, what was the first seed he picked? Sorry, they're, they're talking on Twitch. Okay, so with the score of Pud wins, Pud wins. Big round of applause for Pud. And uh, on, I'm assuming with something, something, maybe Derb was winning on Twitch. 24 for Harry. Can anybody beat 24? 24, 24, I don't know. I think... Derb had like 30-ish or something. I'm going to give Derb the win unless somebody says they had more than him. Big round of applause for Derb on Twitch. Bravo, bravo. Hey, guys. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for episode 120... Uh, 5, 6, 7, 127. Is that right? I think it is. 127 of Trivia Ronin. Uh, thank you so much for your support as we try to go this experience. It's totally in the script to say that. It doesn't make it any less true. For all of us here at Trivia Ronin, I'm Douglas Laurel. I'm saying thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please don't be shitty. Twitch, I fucking love you. Zoom, I fucking love you. And I hope you learned something. Tonight, I hope you learned about uh, botany or some shit. Bye! <laughs>